Good evening, good morning, fellow Toastmaster and guys. Fabulous Friday. Today is the last day of the April this year. Welcome to International Dynamic Speakers Chapter Meeting. My name is Nur Hasim, and I'm and I am adopt the Toastmaster of the day this meeting tonight. Meeting theme is around entrepreneurship. According to Investorpedia, a small business and entrepreneurship have a lot of common, but they are different. Small business is company, usually a sole proprietorship or partnership that is not medium size or large size business. Operate locally, doesn't have access to man of resource or capital. Entrepreneurship refers to an individual that has an idea and intend to execute on that idea, usually to disrupt the current market on the current situation with new product or new service. Entrepreneurship usually start as small, small business, but the long-term vision is much greater to see the high profit capital market share with an innovative new idea. Before we start the meeting, we will listen opening speech from our president, Willie Low. Over to you, Mr. President. Thank you, Toastmaster of the day. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Every Toastmaster for guests for all over the world. I remember around 15, 15, 10 to 12 years. Actually, not, I can't recall actually how long was that. I remember I was watching a talk show on entrepreneurship in a local media in Singapore. Yeah, I mean, based in Singapore. And, and at the time, they were talking about how those contestants want to do a pitch in a leaf when they are only given two minutes of speech. They may have a very good idea. They have a very good sales speech. I mean, they have a very good products that they want to sell to you, to, to any one of you. But the problem with them is they are sometimes I do not know what they are speaking because even the person, they can't convince the person who are in the lift. to sell a, their product because they only got one to two minutes in the leaf. So I was thinking, what can they do to improve their sales speech? Or do, do they need to convince the, the potential investor? And I look and go, I look through all the contestants and I, I heard there's three potential contestants. They are able to sell that pitch. I do not know they are a Toastmaster or they have the natural way of speaking, a sales speech to the audience, to, to the investor in a leaf. And I realized one thing. I should come back to Toastmaster. Actually I, I, actually, I joined Toastmaster in 2003. I left in 2006. I came back in 2018. And at that time, I, I was thinking, what is the thing that I let to convince anyone? So I was, okay. Actually, the right place to go to improve our speech is to draw Toastmaster. Toastmaster is the right place 
if you want to improve your sales pitch, if you are angry, so that you can sell your product in just a few minutes to a potential investor. I, I will not say much about what are the steps of entrepreneurship because since we are a communication and leadership, I will talk more on speaking. If you can't sell us, you, you can't sell yourself to other people, then you should join a Toastmaster Cup, whether locally, online, or anywhere in the world, based on your schedule. Because that's where you can support employer as well as sales pitch doesn't mean that you have to be in an entrepreneurial stage. Sales pitch a call where you first met a girl out there, you need to sell yourself to her. I remember in the past where I enjoyed a social networking that was in 2000. I couldn't sell myself. I met 200 girls, but I still do it. But when my friend asked me to introduce this particular girl to them, I able to, I able to help them to break the ice. So means that I can break the ice, but I don't know how to sell. <laughs> so come back to entrepreneurship. Communication is the first step to any sales pitch, whether is it a static of a new startup or any, any of the many situation is a sales pitch because communication and Toastmaster will help you improve your sales pitch. Not only that, they take part in table topic will help you improve your sales speech. Correct? Just try to take part in table topic and you will be amazed that if you are revoked as the best table topic tonight, that means you have the potential to be a great entrepreneur. Over back to you, Toastmaster today. Thank you, Toastmaster really low. Yeah, sometimes we need to identify what the, is the best idea from our uh, life. So we need to do it, do it, and do it. Next, we will, before we uh, on the segment post topic master, I invite our supporter tonight. The first is timer. Lee Buckley will be timer. Lee Buckley, a special Toastmaster from Sydney and also from Torres Toastmaster Club. TTM Lee, could you please tell us about your role as the timer? Offer to you. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster of the evening. Hello, everyone. My role as the timer is to help speakers keep track of timing. I will be displaying the virtual background as the timing lights. For example, if it's table topics, it's one to two minutes. I will display the green light at one minute, yellow at one and a half, and red light at two minutes and it's five, six, and seven for the speeches. And I will be reporting the timing at the end of every segment. Back to you, Mr. Toastmaster of the evening. Uh, thank you, Toastmaster Lee Buckley. And then our uh, counter, Edward Jung. Toastmaster Edward Jung, could you please tell us about your role as a uh, counter? Offer to you. Mr. President, Topic Toastmaster of the evening, Topic Master of the Toastmaster is the most welcome guest. As your uh, counter for the evening, I will be counting all crutches, such as odds, arms, repeat words, and other space fillers. And when called upon, I will give a report. 
Toastmaster of the evening. Okay. Thank you, Toastmaster Edward. For many people, crisis is darkness. But for entrepreneurship, crisis like pandemic era is new opportunity to create new product, new service, and it is good time to try new idea is suitable for market, for people or not. We have an exciting program for you tonight. We will kick off with a workshop on evaluation masterclass at the meeting. Giving feedback is essential skill with real life application. Of course, in our club, evaluation is very important to improve our capacity to be better. In this workshop, we will learn how to evaluate, how to take a point from the speaker and how to deliver the evaluation powerful and impactful for speaker. I invite Thomas Chen. Thomas Chen is an international speaker who has spoken in many countries. like Australia, Philippines, Indonesia, Hong Kong, China, India, United States, and more. Be speaking on the stage 2000, engaging in seminar format training on immersing in one-to-one -one coaching. Toastmasters strive to deliver highly transformational and high-touch service. Please bring the host down in welcoming Toastmaster with his workshop on an evaluation Toastmaster master class. Offer to you, Toastmaster Thomas. All right, thank you Toastmaster of the day for that very generous introduction. All right, so if you can hear me and see me clearly, please key into the chat, Y-E-S, yes. So this masterclass is going to be highly engaging, it's going to be highly interactive, and most importantly, let's have fun. All right, I see that we have a very enthusiastic and energetic crowd today, all right? So once again, a very big thank you for providing me with this opportunity to share about evaluation. So how this is going to work is at any point in time, if any of you have any questions, do input into the chat. You do not need to take down any notes because I'm going to send the slides to all of you after this presentation. So sit back, relax, and enjoy yourself. All right, so just a little bit about myself. As introduced earlier, my name is Thomas. I began my Toastmasters journey back when I was in university. And after that, I enjoyed it so much that I even made public speaking one of my business portfolio. And since then, I've been conducting numerous workshops professionally as well as Toastmasters. And I certainly always very appreciative of the Toastmasters movement because it has helped me to be who I am today. And I will always love to give back in terms of sharing my knowledge. All right, so now let's go right into the presentation itself. The first question that I love to ask all of you is, what is evaluation, right? Key into the chat. You do not need to key in a five to seven minute speech, just a few keywords about what you think evaluation is. What comes to your mind whenever we talk about evaluation? Come, keep it going, keep it going. This is going to be a two-way thing. Anyone? No right, no wrong. We are just here to, learn. to support people to grow, giving feedback. Anyone else? Constructive criticism. Constructive criticism, maximizing the value. All right. So many of you got it. So it is feedback, yes. But from my personal point of view, it is about creating a well-balanced feedback. So for those of you who have witnessed an evaluation before, if you were to notice, it is always about both sides of the coins, the excellent area and the enhancement area. It must be well-balanced. And more than just that, it must be delivered in a way that is positive and constructive. 
right? Positive in the sense that we want to motivate the speaker with our evaluation so that we can encourage them to do better and constructive in the sense that we give them feedback which are applicable and relatable for them to apply the next time round. All right, so activity time, just a short activity, which I would love all of you to be part of it. All right, so what is going to happen now is I want all of you to share with us one thing you love and one thing you feel can be better about the following. All right, so I'm going to show you a few pictures and I want all of you to answer this question. One thing you love and one thing you feel can be better. All right, ready? And the first thing is Singapore. But I see since that we have an international crowd today, share with us one thing you love and one thing you feel can be better about your country. All right, let's keep it up a notch. All right, one thing you love and one thing you feel can be better. Come, keep it coming. Yeah, input into the chat accordingly. Love the diversity and can be better is the unity. All right, thank you. Anyone else? Love the food. Yes, that's something I love in Singapore as well. And I'm sure the food in Spain is amazing. Anything you feel can be better? Beauty, okay, but need to learn a new language. Cleanliness, clean environment, weather can be better. Patricia, are you from Singapore? Yes, I am. Ah, awesome. Relatable. <laughs> I'm like sweating even in the aircon room. All right, that's great. Okay, so now I'm going to show you another picture. Same thing, one thing you love and one thing you feel can be better. All right, ready? And here there is Toastmasters International. Yes, share with me one thing you love and one thing you feel can be better about Toastmasters International. Don't worry, I think there isn't any district officers around, so please be liberal with your <laughs> opinion. But even so, I think it's a good opportunity for us to know how we can improve in terms of the Toastmasters movement because we are all leaders with the ability to influence it. Right? All right, Corey, love the communication skills. Lifelong learning. Oh, by the way, I saw a comment from Panos. Don't worry, here in Singapore, we are also mostly late. <laughs> Shorter duration. Okay, Corey, I, I'm going to speak a little bit uh, quicker. <laughs> love the new friends. Love the public speaking pace. Hard to do with the time difference, videos. All right, so these are very good feedbacks. Any uh, club leaders right here do assess it accordingly. Oh, thank you for the praise. <laughs> All right, so now to the final one. The final one is going to be a challenge, right? Because it is quite hard to assess the final one, especially in terms of areas of improvement. Are you all ready for it? All right, one, two, three, here goes. Ta-da! <laughs> okay, that's just a joke. Please, please don't give any feedback. I have a weak heart, I can't take it. <laughs> But the point that I'm trying to bring across today is that we are evaluating every day. That's right. We are not only evaluating in Toastmasters, but we are evaluating out of Toastmasters itself. Think about it. The first thing when we wake up, we evaluate what food we want to eat. At work, we evaluate how we want to do our different tasks and projects. And when we go back home, we evaluate how we want to relax and enjoy ourselves. Hence, evaluation to me is an essential life skill. And it's certainly something we have to refine on. And I hope after today, after I share this, it will motivate you to elevate your evaluation skill as well. Because it is something you can apply not only in Postmasters, but in real life as well. Right? And some other benefits include attentiveness. Guilty as charged, sometimes during Toastmasters meeting, I tend to zone out. <laughs> Apologies to the different speakers. But I notice when I'm an evaluator, it automatically elevates my attentiveness. Why is it so? Because I want to listen to the details so that I can evaluate accordingly. And that's why evaluation, it helps me in a way to become more attentive. And not only that, it allows me to learn from others. Think about it. When we listen to the speech of others, are we truly learning? Perhaps, but in my opinion, to elevate the learning process, we want to assess it. Even if we are not their evaluator, we can do our own silent evaluation of the different speeches. 
evaluate where are the enhancement points, evaluate what are the excellent points so that we can learn from there and we can apply to our own speech as well. And of course, real life applications like what I mentioned earlier, you can use this in your skill sets itself. And just like what we really mentioned a bit earlier, you know, sales skills, you need to use evaluation in sales skills also. And for those of you who have a partner, especially someone who asks you questions such as, do I look fat in this? It's up to you to evaluate accordingly. <laughs> all right. So the next part I want to share with all of you is the rubrics of an evaluation. So those of you who are judges, you have probably seen this before. All right. And the reason why I want to show this is because I want to share with all of you the different components that consist of evaluation. So we know how to apportion the resources accordingly, right? So the highest percentage, it will be analytical quality itself, meaning our analysis of the speech. Is it detailed? Is it specific? Do we go right into the different components itself, right? It includes both the excellent points and the enhancement points. Those are under analytical quality, all right? And next, we have recommendations, which is very important because it's the second highest component in the matrix itself. Recommendations, consists of suggestions we give the speaker so that it can be better the next time round. And I will share what is essential in a recommendation itself later, all right? And techniques. Remember, when we evaluate, we want to motivate and elevate the speaker. So are we positive? Are we motivational? Do we understand from the speaker point of view? All of these are under techniques. And finally, something many speakers miss out, but it's practically free marks, is the summary itself, right? You need to wrap everything up with a summary. And I'm going to share you one way later on how you can do this effectively. And trust me, this is not something you want to miss out because it's a practically free 15 marks of repeating content, which you already mentioned earlier, all right? Okay, so now it brings to the next question of how should I format my evaluation, all right? So different people, they will have different strategies. Some people, they use the hamburger method. Some people, they use the pros and cons. Some people, they use the WOW. But personally for me, I use this format, all right? I call it the six-pack format because this is the closest I will ever get to having a six-pack. <sighs> but if you were to notice, right, this white box looks like a piece of rectangular paper. So usually what I will do is I will divide this rectangular piece of paper into seven parts as seen from the screen itself, right? And one part will be where I lay out all the excellent points and another part will be where I lay out all the enhancement points. And the bottom is for me to take notes. This is important because I see some evaluators, they just scribble the points everywhere. But when it comes to delivering the evaluation, that will affect us because we need to spend additional time to find out where the different points are. It's not systematic, it's not organized. So I will encourage all of you to have a format to it so that when you are delivering the evaluation, it is smoother, it is more seamless, okay? All right, so now I would want to zoom into the timing sequence, all right? How should you keep close track of the time, which is very important, especially for contests, because if you go over time, even you have the best evaluation in the world, you will not be qualified. So for those of you who are not aware, the timing of evaluation is two to three minutes. Two minutes, green. Two and a half minutes, yellow. Three minutes, red. And three and a half minutes is the maximum. And if you were to look at the breakdown of the timing, when it reached the green light, it is two minutes. Overall, there's three and a half minutes, which means when you reach the green light, you need to be 60% done in terms of your evaluation because the timing isn't exactly proportionate if you think about it. Green is two minutes. Yellow is two and a half minutes, which means green to yellow is only 30 seconds. So 60% of your evaluation has to be done by the time you reach green, which is why I write three excellent points and one enhancement point. And through the green and yellow light, you need to finish your other two enhancement points. At the red light, I highly encourage all of you, regardless of whether you have said finish all your points, go right into the summary. 
Because at the end of the day, it is better that you do not mention all the points but finish on time than mention all the points but go out of time. Agree? Right? So this is something you want to keep close track of. By the green light, 60% of your evaluation has to be done. By the red light, you want to start your summary. Okay? All right. So now I will share about some things to look out for in an evaluation. Because of the lack of time, I'm going to touch briefly on each of these different elements. But I'm going to share with you where you can find the specific details of these different elements. All right. So firstly, content organization. Is the content well organized or all over the place? If they are using a story, is the story smooth or, and seamless? Or is it very jagged? Out of nowhere, some new character come in. Right? So this is all under content organization, which is essentially the speech structure. In terms of vocal, there are different components. Firstly, is the speaker audible? Right? Can you all hear the speaker speak? Secondly, does the speaker use vocal variety to breathe life into the speech? Maybe reenact certain character, maybe exude certain emotions. And thirdly, under voice is pause. Does the speaker practice the power of pauses? especially when you want to emphasize a point, or is it just monotonous without any pauses? These are under vocal, okay? For body gestures, first off, facial expression. Is it complementary to my content? Meaning if I'm describing a sad situation, am I laughing and smiling? Well, perhaps if I'm a sadist, then yes. <laughs> but that's not what something we want to do, correct? Secondly, hand gestures. I know now in a physical, uh, in a virtual setting, there's no stage pacing, but hand gestures is still important, right? Of course, if those who are standing up, then yes, you have to account for pacing as well. So these are under body gestures. Your hand gestures, it should not be all over the place, but it should be complementary of the content, right? For example, if I'm angry, I will do this. If I'm uh, very depressed, I will do this. All of these are under gestures, all right? For research, if we are sharing information-intensive speeches, is it well substantiated, right? Are there sources to back it up? Are the sources credible? All of these are under research. Visual aid. This is a visual aid itself, PowerPoint, or maybe some physical objects that I use to complement my speech. But it must be complementary, right? Do not use a visual aid for the sake of using a visual aid. It must substantiate your content as well. And for power people who use PowerPoint, one common mistake is that their PowerPoint is either too wordy or the color is not contrasting enough. That's not the best way to maximize visual aid, right? And word usage, the words we use, are they able to trigger emotions? Are they able to let the audience visualize what is going on in the content itself? These are all words, all right? So these are some areas to look into, but there is still one area which I have not mentioned. And this, in my opinion, is the most important area and it should not be left out in an evaluation. These different areas you can pick and choose because at the end of the day, with the limited time, you can't catch up on everything. But there's one element that you must include, all right? And in my point of view, is the speech content itself. Because what I mentioned earlier are all under speech delivery. But at the end of the day, content is the most important. Because if the content is all over the place, if it's not relatable, if it does not have learning lesson, then it will miss the mark, right? So for evaluation, I will always have one part which will mention about the speech content. The others are optional based on what you want to fit accordingly. But speech content, in my opinion, is one of the most important. So what are some things to take into account of? Is the content relatable to the audience? And I'm sharing something like quantum physics, which may not everyone may not understand, or is it something that everyone can connect with? Is that a learning lesson that people can bring up? If I'm sharing a story, is that a journey of transformation which shows my growth? Right? All of these are under speech content. All right. So, like what I promised earlier, I'm going to share how you can find a detailed elaboration on each of these parts, and to do that check out the pre-O Competent Communicator Manual. So for those of you who are more senior members, you should know about this Competent Communicator Manual. 
before Pathway was being released, we were all using this manual. And why I say this manual is good? Because they have, yes, like what one of the, like what Evaluator 3 is showing. Michael, yes, like what Michael is showing. Yes, exactly. And why is this good? It's because they have a project which is allocated to each of these components, which means they have a project on vocal variety, they have a project on content organization, they have a project on visual aid itself and more. So the elaboration is very in-depth, right? So for those of you who don't have the competent communicator manual, I encourage you to ask your senior club members or you can find it online as well, okay? All right, so now going right into the evaluation itself. If you were to remember, I mentioned three parts, excellent points, enhancement points, and summary, okay? So for excellent point, it is essentially which areas of the speech has the speaker done well? And it has three factors that we need to take into account of, okay? Three variables, I mean. Okay, overview, evidence, and effect, okay? So allow me to go in depth. For overview, it is essentially what did the speaker do well? So you want to start off with the overview, which is a general idea. All right. So for example, if the speaker's speech is very organized, what I will simply say is your speech is well organized and well structured. Ah, after that, I need to go into the evidence. I want to substantiate it because you remember under analytical quality, it must be focused and specific. All right. So that's where I extract the evidence and elaborate on it. So for example, if the speaker used a lot of signposts, for, for example, words like one, firstly, secondly, thirdly, these are signposts which help with the content organization. Because whenever they use go to a new signpost, we know that they are going on to a new point. So I will use that as an evidence. You integrated numerous signposts into your speech, such as firstly, secondly, thirdly. And that helps with the content organization. All right. And the next part to it is the effect. So what? So what if they have done this? How does it positively influence the audience, right? So that's where, because the speech is well organized with these different signposts, the audience is able to follow through the speech with crystal clear clarity. They will not be lost in the sea of content, right? You can elaborate more on it. So if you put everything together, it, of course you can elaborate more on it. It is simply like that, right? Very straightforward, very direct. You just need to put all the points together. You can elaborate a little bit more, but this capture the main essence of what you need. All right? All right, so moving on now to enhancement point. Okay, so enhancement point, essentially, there are areas of the speech which the speaker can work on. And it has five variables, which means enhancement points will need more work. And during, for those of you who are taking part in contests, where you have five minutes to curate your evaluation, I always encourage you to spend more time on the enhancement point instead. And I will share with you even more so why, okay? So the variables in enhancement point includes overview, evidence, effect, recommendations, and recommended effect, right? So for the first three variables, it is the same as excellent points, right? I will touch on it briefly, but something different is the recommendation and recommended effect. And if you were to remember, I mentioned earlier, recommendations itself is 30% of the evaluation, which is the second highest component. So it's something we should put quite a, a bit of emphasis into, right? Okay, so overview is the same thing. Give a general idea. What can the speaker work on? Okay, so assuming for this speaker, the call to action, meaning the learning lessons, is not apparent, then I will just mention it. While your speech had a robust content, I felt that the call to action was not apparent. And do notice something. Before I introduce the enhancement point, to make it more positive and motivating, I will cushion it. And how I cushion it is to mention the points that are excellent first, right? I can just mention it briefly, although earlier on, I have elaborated it. So why I want to do so is because it helps to cushion the effect. It's not too direct and sharp, and it, it is part of motivating and elevating the speaker, which is why at the front, I write, while your speaker had a robust content, and then 
I share the opinions that I have, right? Evidence, similarly, okay? So perhaps if this speaker is sharing the life story of a boy and the call to action is not apparent, I would talk about it like, you ended off by sharing about the boy, how the boy had grown up rather than what we could learn from him. So I felt this part can be done better. That's the evidence I want to bring up, right? And you also want to elaborate, with this part being missing, how does it affect the audience, right? Because this is all under analytical quality. So I will share that because it is missing, the audience do not know what to take away from it and they will be left hanging, right? So as you can see, every part connect with one another. It's a smooth and seamless process. Ah, but we still need to look into a very important part that is the recommendation. Yes, so for recommendation, essentially we want to ask how they can do better. Right? We want to put it across. And more than just that, for the recommendations itself, it must be something that is feasible. Meaning the audience, the, uh, meaning anyone, even the speaker can do it. We don't want to have something that is too out of the world. Oh, I encourage you to throw $1,000 US dollars into the air. <laughs> something like that. Right? You want something that everyone can apply. Okay? And if you were to look at my recommendation, how I do it is, yes, the call to action is missing, so you want to put in a call to action. But more than just that, I show the speaker how they can specifically do it. We must do this so it elevates our credibility as evaluators. We want to show them that it is possible. So I give an, a demonstration live. Ladies and gentlemen, the next time you feel like giving up, remember the story of the young boy and keep pressing on. So it is as if I am the speaker and I show them how it is done. Yeah, so this constitute of the recommendation. And aside from that, you also want to share the power of your recommendation. What is the positive effect of it, right? So with this learning lesson, the audience know what to take action on and the speech will be more enriching and educational, right? So if you were to look at it briefly, you do not need to read this, but this is essentially the whole part under enhancement point. And it is definitely longer and more developed than the excellent point, which is why you want to spend more time on the enhancement points, right? Because it includes recommendations, okay? So some people may have this question, what if time is running out? I have so much to cover and I'm afraid that I'm not able to make it in time. So this is my recommendation for all of you. If you are at the second or third enhancement point and you realize there's no more time, it's going to be the red light soon, remove the overview evidence and effect, right? Because that is under analytical quality and analytical quality also consists of the excellent points, right? So since you have already mentioned about it and time is not enough, remove it, but put more emphasis on the recommendation and recommended effect. After all, that is 30% of the score, right? So if time is running out, this is something for you to consider, yeah? Okay, so finally, summary. A lot of speakers miss this out, but it's free marks. Essentially, earlier on, I mentioned the overview. All the overview, put it together. Ta-da, that's your summary. <laughs> <laughs> as easy as that. So for example, David is a confident speaker who excels at content organization as well as speech transformation. To take his speech to the next level, he can consider to be more theatric, add more vocal variety, and give us a solid call to action. With that, I'm sure David will be a spectacular speaker. 15 bucks. Right? So don't miss this. You already have all the points. You just need to put it all together and do this during the red light, okay? Okay, so apologies that I'm rushing so much because I only have a little time left. Yeah, I have so much that I want to share with all of you. So any point in time, if you're not able to capture anything, feel free to ask me during the Q&A or you can watch the replay of this meeting. Okay, 
so here are some of my personal tips and tricks that have helped me in my evaluation journey. And I hope that it has been, it will be of value add to all of you, okay? So first thing comes with note taking, all right? So for note taking, I realized a lot of evaluators, they write so much notes that they can practically make a speech out of it. <laughs> and that is not what we want to do. Because the problem with that is, give so much details in that paper, when we are actually delivering the evaluation, we may be lost in the sea of content because there are so many words and we don't know where to find it. Secondly, if there are so many words and if you are writing the full sentence out just for evaluation, it will sound very rehearsed, which is not what we want to do, right? We don't want to sound rehearsed. So what I encourage all of you to do is just focus on the key points. Just write down the key points. When I share these recommendations with people, many people, they have the fear that they will forget what they want to say. But trust me, you would. And this picture shows it. If you can see from this picture, some of the strokes are missing. Yet all of you know is less is more. Why is it so? Because this is how the human mind works. We just need to have a few cues and we are able to connect the dot. And it applies for the evaluation as well. You just need to have a few keywords and you are able to connect the dot. Think about it. Every day when we are talking to our friends and family members, do we have a script? No, right? Yet how are we able to speak so smoothly and seamlessly? Even for today, to be very honest, I didn't prepare a script as well. And because that is the power of human's mind, we just need to have the cue words and we are able to connect the dot. In fact, it, it seems even more natural, right? Secondly, content creation. When you are creating a content, you want to go with the angle of impacting the speaker before impressing, all right? Duty as charge, when I'm a new speaker, I just focus on the fireworks, you know, make it very theatric, make it very dramatic, use all the bombastic words, a lot of fireworks and smoke screen. While it may sound impressive, at the end of the day, what I realized is that the speaker has done nothing much and I could have delivered the content with a simpler format and a more straightforward manner. All right, so our number one priority, regardless of whether it's contest or not, is to value add the speaker, right? We want them to take the points which will really help them to become better. Yes, impressing matters as well, which I will elaborate more later, but the number one priority is always impacting the speaker. Think about the most useful point rather than the most impressive point, right? Secondly, justify and specify. I shared about this a little bit earlier and that is every point you make, it must be justified. When you say the speaker is confident, why? Is it because of his gesture? Is it because of the way he speaks? Is it because of his firmness? Why is it so? And you want to go into the specific details. That's how you differentiate yourself from the other evaluator in terms of the analysis, right? Okay, so earlier on I mentioned impact first and yes, you can still do a little bit of impressing. In fact, it will be an advantage if it's done in a controlled manner because at the end of the day, we can have the best content but if we don't capture the audience attention, you cannot transmit across the message effectively, right? So yes, you still can use a little bit of creativity depends on what's your preference but it is from the perspective of capturing their attention rather than just purely impressing them. Because at the end of the day, it is still about impacting everyone rather than just impressing. So this is done to capture attention. When you capture their attention, then go into the delivery itself, right? Okay, now moving on to the delivery. Be positive and supportive, right? So the words we use, we want it to be a cushion, right? We want to help the speaker to feel even more motivated so that they can do better the next time around. And also know that everything is not absolute. At the end of the day, evaluations are our personal opinion. We may feel one way, but others may feel another way, right? So always remember that you want to share it 
in my opinion rather than sharing it as a be all and all that's it if i feel his vocal variety means work means it needs work no debate right it should not be that but you do it in a way that in my opinion you could put more emphasis on the vocal variety by reenacting the different characters something like that in my opinion right so that's how you be positive and supportive okay show how remember early on when i mentioned about the recommendations you want to show how it is done right you don't want to just put the recommendation there and then don't exemplify it you want to exemplify it as well so that it elevate your credibility and the speaker know that it is possible to do it right that will be an even stronger motivation for them okay audience engagement okay so this one is very important at the end of the day our evaluation is not just for the speaker it is for everyone to learn so it is important for us to engage the audience as well how can you do so there are a few techniques first technique ask questions ladies and gentlemen how many of you agree that thomas is very good looking say yes <laughs> I assume all of you say yes, but you get my point. You get my point. Oh, thank you, Patricia. You are so kind. <laughs> but you get my point, right? Second way, instead of addressing the speaker directly, you can address the speaker by the name, right? I feel that Ahmad is a confident speaker. Rather than Ahmad, you are a confident speaker. Notice the difference. The first example, it feels that I'm addressing everyone. The second example, it feels that I'm addressing Ahmad directly. Of course, at some parts, I can address Ahmad directly, but I will also want to have some parts where I am addressing everyone. Right? So this is another thing for you to consider. And the third thing is eye contact. I know it's a little bit different in the virtual setting. For the virtual setting, to maintain eye contact, you need to look into the mirror. I'm still trying to get used to it. All right? But in a physical setting, you also want to look at eye contact and not just at a single person, right? You want to look at the eye contact as many people as you can. I know some of us, we have the fear of establishing eye contact. So a trick is to look at their forehead because it will just seem that you are looking them in the eye. Trust me, it works, right? So these are ways to engage the audience to allow them to feel acknowledged, right? Okay, TikTok. Like what I mentioned, time is of an essence and not only time, but also time and location. Some of us, we have that perfectionist mindset. And that means in a five minute preparation time, we will spend four minutes on one point. <laughs> Please, uh, <laughs> that is not something we want to do. We want to equally apportion it so that it will be a well-developed evaluation. And always remember at the red light, regardless of how much you have done, go into the summary, all right? Because it is always better to finish on time than go over time, right? Okay, so every battle is won, not in the battle itself, but in the preparation phase. So how can you prepare yourself to become a great evaluator, right? Firstly, this works for me amazingly, and I encourage all of you to do it, is to have a bank. Right? What do I mean by have a bank? You can create many different types of bank. And I'm not talking about the financial banks, but you can create things such as word bank. Whenever you listen to a word that you feel is very powerful, that you feel you can use it, put it into a document. When you come with an evaluation point that you feel that is great and you can use it in the future, put it into the bank. When you come across a joke, a humor, and you feel that it's amazing and hilarious, put it into the bank. Because at the end of the day, to truly learn and to truly remember, we have to constantly review it. Toastmasters, very hardworking. We see many people taking down notes, but not many people keep the notes, uh, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> and unfortunately, to really maximize it, we need to constantly review it. So what I encourage all of you is to put it into a document you know a virtual document so that you can constantly review it and not just review it but also apply it right you must apply it so that's where you can truly become better okay search and research do your homework study other better speakers and not only toastmasters you can look into professional speakers tech talks 
all of those have learning points for us to emulate and become better, right? So it is always a craft in the making. And most importantly, practice, 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 right? Just like Darren LeCoy, the world champion, always say, stage time, stage time, stage time. Public speaking is not something you can just study. It is something you need to practice as well. And the best way is to attend Toastmasters meeting. And I highly encourage people to not just attend their own club meetings, but visit around the world, which is even made easier right now with this whole setting. Visit around the world, learn from other people, and keep trying and take every opportunity to speak, like table topics itself. So I hope more people volunteer for Patricia's table topic later, right? Table topics itself become even better because every single practice, every single word you say is a step closer towards you becoming a spectacular speaker. All right, have fun. And now to put everything together, these are some points for you to take note of. So later when you review the slide deck, look into it, okay? So we will open the floor up for Q&A. I hope I still have a bit of time for that. But even after today's session, if you still have any questions, feel free to connect with me through these different platforms and I would love to value add as much as I can. All right, so now let's open up the floor to Q&A. So if any of you have any questions, I see that today we have quite a comfortable crowd, so you can feel free to unmute yourself or yeah, just put your questions into the chat. Lee, how long more do I have, Bucky? One and a half minutes, Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect timing. <laughs> one and a half minutes. I guess that makes time for one question. Thomas, I have a question for you. Um, Mike Marlowe. Hey, yes. Um, evaluations are very cultural. When you evaluate in Germany, they can be very brutal, direct, and to the point. And some people may take it very hard. If you go to Japan, you have to be very soft. Where is the middle ground? All right. So, for my opinion, perhaps in such situation, we would want to ask the speaker first. Are they open to a more direct style? Yeah, that's right. But in Singapore, if someone does that, they will get beaten up. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but I understand some, some evaluators, they are more open and direct. Yeah. Thank you. Panos, I see you raise your hand. Thomas, my question would be about your mindset as an evaluator. So do you always have your, your mind set upon delivering a competitive style evaluation where you balance the certain elements and the the amount of recommendation and praise under a certain amount of time. You always have a summation and so on. That's a that's a competition style evaluation. Ooh. Do you always go for that, or do you do you do you go with the flow with a certain speaker? Because sometimes a different style of evaluation might serve the speaker best. A very good question, Panos. Thanks for sharing. And with that question, I'm going to be very open to all of you. Okay. So there are people who are competitive to the extent where they memorize evaluation. And let me be very open and upfront to you, which means they have a template evaluation which can be applied to every single, almost 90% of the speaker. And while that is not against the rule, it's not something that I would recommend because every speaker, they will sure have their unique points, right? So I will always recommend from the angle of impacting first. When I first started out, it is purely impressing. I will use very big words. I will use a lot of rhetorical devices, but I feel that at the end of the day, they don't get much. So from the angle of me going in, it's always about how I can impact them in terms of the recommendations and also what they have done well. After that, add a little bit of color and flavor just to hook onto the audience's attention. But a bulk of it will still be in the content. And I feel, as time passes, people are getting smarter and smarter. They can differentiate theatrix from real solid content itself. So I feel that this direction, if we keep going in that direction, I think we will do well and benefit the speaker as well. Thank you, Hanos. A Angela, you have a question? How do you evaluate someone if you can't hear them or the 
speech was total nonsense? Very good question. So, right, uh, I, I'm not sure how comfortable are you with stopping a speaker. So for me, right, when I can't hear them from the start, right, I will early raise it up because I don't want them to spend seven minutes, right, to have poor audio quality, then just to realize that they are not doing very uh, clearly itself. But if it is about the content and it is confusing, right, then I would raise that as my recommendation. But it is truly my belief that all content, all speeches have excellent and enhancement point. Even the from our perspective, the worst speech from my experience have good points as well. It may just be one good point, but we can still mention it, right? So it is really about how much we want to analyze into the speech and from there, give recommendations accordingly. So if I don't understand the speech and we, us in Singapore, we know we have a Toastmasters whose speech is about durians, donkey, mango. I'm not sure you all know who I'm talking about, but that speech, you can't evaluate it. So I use that as a point and put it as a recommendation. Hope the answers. Thank you. All right, I see time is up. I see Professor Buckley is raising the time up. <laughs> so once again, a very big thank you for this opportunity to share with all of you. And I hope that it has been of immense value. Any of you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Thank you and back to you Toastmaster of the day. Thank you Toastmaster Chen for your effective and enlightening workshop. Personally, I learned more from this uh, workshop. I not uh, five elements of the evaluation. The first is analytical quality or analysis, excellent enhancement. What is the excellent? What is enhancement? The second is recommendation, recommendation and recommendation. What is your recommendation, your suggestion to improve the uh, Prepare the speech uh, after the, the day. The third is technique. You can, we can say that we give motivational or etiquette a point from the speech. The last is summary. Also, the timer is very important. We have only maximum three minutes. We have to manage the time very well and powerful. Thank you, Toastmaster Thomas. This tip can be powerful and useful if we practice it. We practice it. Thank you. The next session is Topic Master. I invite Patricia Tay. She will be topic master. Patricia has been in the early childhood field for over 20 years. As a mother of three daughters, she believes that the joy of learning should never stop. Toastmaster Patricia. Thank you, Toastmaster of the day. Hi, good evening, fellow Toastmasters and guests. Entrepreneurship is today's theme. Entrepreneurship has the ability to improve standards of living and create wealth. It benefits not just the entrepreneurs, but also the related businesses. An entrepreneur has to be passionate, successful, influential, and also innovative. What do you think? Can we have some Volunteers for table topic, please. Who would like to volunteer? Okay, this is on impromptu speaking. For table topics timing, after one minute, you will see the green timer. Can we have the timer, please? Yes, Madam Table Topics Thank Master. You. Okay, so that is one minute. At one and a half minutes, you will see yellow. Two minutes, you will see red. And two and a half minutes is when time is up. And you have to round up quickly. All right. So all together, there are 20 table topics. All these are quotes, quotations. 
All right. So when your name is called, you may choose a table topic number and answer in two minutes, one to two minutes. Can we have volunteers, please? Can I go if nobody wants to go? Yeah, Joan, <laughs> I'd love to hear from <laughs> you. Okay, pick a number, please. <laughs> uh, I'll pick the table topic 20. 20, woohoo, okay. Let's see. Yes. Always deliver more than expected. It's Angela. Always deliver more than expected. Over to you, Joan. President, fellow Toastmasters, and guests always deliver more than expected. This is so true in today's world that we have to give more than take from people. This is because we are trying to spread positivity and kindness around us. It's not just about taking and learning each time, but also supporting that we are doing continuously in tabletop in Toastmasters by trying as much as possible to even take roles and uh, giving as much as we can our strengths and skills so that everyone learns. It's just not we are learning, but or I'm learning, but everybody learns. Sometimes situations do go around, um, go beyond your control and we cannot contribute, but we always try as much as to contribute to make our meetings successful so that everybody learns. And it's just not me who's learning or you is learning, but everybody learns. So what is expected here is that growth is a community growth and not just individual growth. So always deliver more than expected. So we all grow as a community and we all spread positivity around us. Thank you and back to you, Table Topic Master. Thank you, Toastmaster Joan. All right, can we have the next volunteer, please? Let's see. Angela, would you like to have a try? Wow, thank you, Angela. You're always ready. Choose a number. Number six, please. All right. Whether you think you can or you think you can't, you are right. Whether you think you can or think you can't, you are right. Do you agree or disagree? This is a very famous quotation by Henry Ford. And I think I agree with him. Toastmasters agrees with him because every time we go to hear a speech, it's very often about motivation and overcoming your fears and getting started. And there are two kinds of jobs to do. There are do those jobs which can be done, but you're just afraid that you personally can't do them when the majority of people can do them. And and there are people who are afraid of quite simple things. I remember a time when I was having difficulties and I was afraid to open an envelope. I was applying for jobs and I was just so scared I was going to get rejection. I couldn't open a bill, I couldn't open a letter. I remember asking a, a boyfriend if he would open the letter and look at it and see what it was. And there are other people who are scared to do simple things like going to the dentist, the optician, or just out for a walk. And then there are other things which are really major tasks. For example, there was a girl who was in an air crash in the Andes, and she walked all the way down the mountain. I think she'd broken her leg, but she managed to hop and to follow the water all the way down and she eventually got down to safety. And it wasn't a normal thing that the average person could have done. It was something she did, which was very challenging. So in both these cases, you probably know of people who have been afraid, but when it came to it, they had no choice. So just pretend you have no choice and then do something and you will find you think you can do it and you can. Back to you, Table Topics Master. Thank you, Toastmaster Angela. All right. 
Let's see, since we don't have any names in the chat, may I call upon Jackie? Jackie from Switzerland. <laughs> Would you like to give it a try? Okay, I'd like to try number 12. Number 12, that must number be your lucky 12. number. Let's have a look. All right, the price of success is hard work. The price of success is hard work. Over to you, Jackie. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters. Good evening in Singapore. Good afternoon in Europe. Then uh, the price of success is hard work. It's a saying, but is it also a belief? Success starts in the head. And are we successful to anything or everything or nothing? It's in the belief. I can't be successful in my work. That's in my opinion. Somebody else might say it's not success. It's luck. Could also be luck, but is success luck or luck is success? Success can come from a background, from a family that says you have to work hard to get a lot of money. And that's success. My success might lie, might lie somewhere else. It could be somewhere in between or more in the humankind or in, in another way of working hard. Doesn't have to be working as a physical work, can also be mentally work, but the success doesn't lie in one's, how to explain it? I can, I can say success is, of time it can be only a day it can be a week success can be a lifetime success can also be a moment success is what we say it's success and with this i return to you madam toastmaster thank you yes indeed can we have panels for the next one <laughs> Panos? Certainly, Patricia, and I think I owe you one since uh, <laughs> yesterday, right? Because thank friends, you. Yes, thank you. That that is very nice. Oh, do really many, nice to see you today. It's always a pleasure to be here and to see you again, Patricia. Um, it's kind of hard to make a choice. Okay, the first person that puts an, a number in the chat will be the one I go for. Just. Pick a number for me. The first person that puts a number in the chat. Okay, number 10. I see Lee number was 10. fast. Number 10. Thank you, Lee. <laughs> Lee, right. is Lee is amazing. <laughs> All right. Empower yourself and realize the importance of contributing to the world by leaving your talent. Empower yourself and realize the importance of contributing to the world by leaving your talent. Over to you, Toastmaster Panos. Thank you, Patricia. Wow, first of all, I'm learning something new because there's one thing with one thing with quotes is that no word goes wasted. When you're reading a quote, there it, it's never a waste of any word. So let's see what the purpose of this quote is. First of all, it's self-directed. Empower yourself. What does empower yourself mean? It starts with intention, as I understand it. You got to be your biggest cheerleader. Any objections to that, friends in the room? You got to be your biggest cheerleader. Then realize the importance. When, what does that mean? When you realize the importance of something, it means that you have not been paying enough attention to it and its meaning in your life until the moment of realization. Now, contributing to the world. Contributing to the world means that you have a difference to make. Yes, you have a difference to make. And you know what? Your life purpose is to finding this difference that only you can make and to give it away to the world. Living your talent. Well, there you have it. If the word living was not added to the quote already by Miss Katerina Burns, then I would be the one adding it. Because living your talent means that you base your existence on your purposeful contribution 
which you arrive at the moment you realize that by empowering yourself, being your own biggest cheerleader is the moment you free up your creative resources. You free up the courage inside of you. The moment that you set yourself free to be who you are destined to be. And this is my wish to you. Be who you are destined to be. Live your talent. Back to you, Patricia. Thank you. Thank you, Panus. All right, I saw Edward's name in the chat. Edward, pick a number. It was Master Edward. Number nine. Number nine. Let's have a look. It is not about ideas. It is about making ideas happen. It is not about ideas. It is about making ideas happen. Over to you, Toastmaster Edward. Mr. President, Toastmaster of the evening, Topic Master, fellow Toastmasters, and most welcome guests. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I am a firm believer that I need not be the smartest person in the room. I need not be the person who comes up with the best idea, as long as I'm the person who gets stuff done. Toastmasters, guess, have you ever been a part of a group at school, working on a project, or at your office place? There is always one person who has the best ideas, the brightest ideas. But when it comes to putting in the elbow grease, when it comes to getting in the work done, is that person the person who can make anything happen? Think about it. When it's time to get stuff done, it doesn't matter who came up with the idea. The most valuable person is the person who puts in the midnight, who burns the midnight oil, who puts in the elbow grease, who gets things done. And that is the key to success. That is the key to entrepreneurship. You may not be the person who came up with the idea, but if you are the person who brings the product or service to the consumer, you are the person who will be successful. At your office, your boss does not care who came up with the idea. Your boss cares with the result. Was the project a success? Are the customers happy? Will they return to do business with us? And you, if you are the person who makes it happen, you are the person your employer will value. And as an employer, you value the employee who actually gets the job done. Am I right or am I wrong? Therefore, it is not about the idea. It is not about the idea. It is about making it happen. Toastmasters and guests, go for it and make it happen. Topic master. Thank you, Toastmaster Edward. Next, we will have Kukraj. Toastmaster Kukraj, thank you for volunteering yourself. Let me see, are you there? Yeah. Yeah, thanks a lot for Kukraj. being with us. Yes. You. Thank you. Would you pick a number, please? Yeah, 17. One second. 17. Success is not in what you have, but who you are. Success is not in what you have, but who you are. Over to you. Yeah, thank you. Right. First of all, I want to say good evening, everyone. And our, today's my topic is all about this. Success is not uh, in what you have, but who you are. Uh, in a simple manner, I want to just describe this uh, thing. Like uh, if you are saying about something about success, so uh, which kind of the compliment, which kind of the dedication you are having for your work, it, it is described by the success. Like if I am a student or I am a, a person who is just trying to learn something and after some time, if I'll say I am a successful person. So it is not all about which kind of the things like uh, you have, but it is all also about who you are. So if I want to just describe myself without saying a single word, then I have to be so all things uh, from my success. So in a simple manner, as per my view, I have only one rule, like say anything but do it. And if you want to be a successful, if you want to describe success, then you have to give a chance to success to describe your own self. Like 
if success is describing you for example if, if success is describing kulraj singh myself and kulraj singh is describing success then it is the greater combination which is the true combination of success because we can't describe success in words in numbers in everything because the ground level the real opportunity of your life can be different so that's all thank you so much for giving this opportunity finally i say only one thing success means which kind of the efforts you are having and what is your own personality it is the success thanks a lot over to you ma'am thank you very much next we will have yogesh yogesh would you pick a number please uh i'll go with uh, table topic 1 uh, wow table topic 1 Today is cheaper to start a business than ever. Today uh, is cheaper to start a business than ever. Over to you, Yogesh. Uh, yes. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. Uh, so my topic is uh, today it's cheaper to start a business uh, than ever. Okay. Uh, so uh, this is a very famous quote, uh, and uh, I can correlate this uh, by giving an example. uh so uh, so suppose uh, today i am having an idea of starting a business uh, but i am keep on uh, continuing uh, postponed it for uh, tomorrow or for tomorrow but that to uh, but uh, there is a saying that uh, tomorrow never comes uh so also uh, i can correlate this quote uh, with the uh, with the hindu mythology Uh, in uh, ramayana uh, there is a devil king known as uh, rama uh, known as rama uh, he wanted to build a uh, uh, he wanted to bridge uh, the earth and the heaven uh, but uh, he always wanted to postpone the, his dream uh, but uh, but when he, uh, but when he uh, but when he came to his death uh, he realized that uh, i have a dream but i never uh, but i never uh, try to bring it into the reality so that's it uh, so uh, so that uh, so over to you ma'am thank you now we'll have the last table topic speaker toastmaster asmina toastmaster asmina would you pick a number please um do you have seven number Seven. Seven. Yes. <clears throat> Don't limit yourself. Don't limit yourself. Over to you, Toastmaster Asmina. Thank you, Patricia, for giving this topic. I will explain this topic with the help of three points. Number one, the sky is the limit. You don't have to limit your aspirations, and you have to set your aspirations. as high as possible so first of all in order to be successful in life we have to set our goals and then we have to jot down that how we are going to achieve those goals through networking system through mentorship and once we set down the goals the time limit the intermediate goals the inter incremental steps that we want to achieve then we have to be point number 2 that we have to be careful of the time there is a time frame and time limit we have given the life and we have to achieve our goals within those time if we are not careful of our time limit then we may not achieve the goal within the time and we may uh, have to have to do lot of other things and we may have to suffer the the third thing that we have to be careful is mindfulness within those time we have to say mindful we have to take different roles for example in toastmasters we have given the class for one hour we have to take different roles we have to achieve some skills we have to uh, have the leadership quality and by doing that not we are training ourselves we are training the team also we are helping the team to achieve the goals as well thank you thank you toastmaster asmina we have come to the end of the table topic segment can i give me a second sorry all right i would like to pass the time back over to our toastmaster of the day toastmaster amat please thank you thank you toastmaster patricia so my topic 
that interesting to speak and we can learn every topic is important in our life. Uh, please put what is the best for double topic speaker. Sixty percent. Before we continue our next segment, prepared speed speaker segment, we will break ten minutes. Thank you. Welcome back, everyone, to the second half of the meeting, the prepared speech segment. You will hear from Four speaker tonight, they will share their thought on the patch project that they are completing. Before we begin, let's look at the sum. Uh, I will introduce the speaker. The first speaker is Angela Lansbury. The evaluator is Jackie. Jackie, please uh, introduce yourself and. Ah, uh, it's a contest speech. Ah, uh, Ahmad, there's no, there's no purpose statement. Okay. Angela Lansbury. Angela will speak live another year. Or the manual or non-manual speech, custom speech. Five to seven. Offer to you, Angela. I will. Sorry. Wait. Angela is an author of the 20 books, including two quotations, which you can see on Amazon and Lulu.com. She has a travel blog with Angela. And would you like to give her feedback on this? The day Angela on Blogger, which he started for dynamic leadership. She has complete presentation mastery and judging you more is now the end of the dynamic leader. Angela, you have five to seven minutes. I would like to remind the speaker to pin the timer, please. Offer to you, Angela. Angela, you're muted. Can you all see me and hear me? Yeah. Friends. Yes. yes. Friends, I have a simple message for you. I want you to live another year. Please put your hand on your heart and promise me I will live another year. That wasn't very difficult, was it? I mean, you've already done it once. However, not everyone finds it so easy, and I'm going to tell you why. First of all, I'll take you back to the time when I overheard my son, my little son, who was seven years old, he was looking forward to his birthday party 
and his best friend was also having a birthday party but his best friend's party was cancelled because his best friend's granny had died and I overheard my son saying to my mother granny granny when are you going to die I was horrified I thought my poor mother she must be thinking, oh, I'm getting old, I'm going to die one day. I should have told him that's not what you say to your grandmother or anybody. However, she wasn't upset at all because she wasn't thinking of herself, she was thinking of him. And she leaned towards him and she said, darling, just think, I'm going to live at least another year and you are going to live another year. We're both going to live another year. And we've got three things to look forward to. First of all, your birthday. And secondly, your summer holiday. And thirdly, what about Christmas? And New Year when I'm going to give you a fancy hat. And as with babies who are easily distracted, he was easily distracted. Now, before I got married, things had been up and down. I'd been single. You may remember early days when you were single and you had a relationship that broke up. I remember once I thought I was going to marry someone and I wasn't. I sat on the edge of a station platform and for one minute I thought I could jump and then I thought I can't do that I cannot do that to my mother so I didn't I said to myself I'll get over this I just have to live another year now, my mother had given me that message when I had lost a job. She phoned me up and said, hello, darling, how are you? And I said, dreadful, I've lost the job. And she said, I've got some news too. Remember that girl, Leslie Whittle, who disappeared? I said, yes. She said, they found her. I said, well, that's good news. My mother said, no, it's not good news, she's dead. I want you to be happy. I have a daughter, you have a mother. I want you to be happy today and all year and the rest of our lives. Promise me you're gonna be happy and live another year. So I did. Now, time moved on, you heard what happened, I had got married and had a baby. When the baby was born, I was lacking sleep. And the health visitor came to see me. I said, I've got postnatal depression. She asked me how much I'd slept. She said, you haven't got postnatal depression. I visited a lady who had postnatal depression. She thought she was a Christmas tree. You've just not got enough sleep. When he sleeps, you sleep very simple. In a year's time, you'll be walking, talking, it'll all be over. Just wait another year. Of course, I waited another year and things improved. Now, my mother did all the cooking. She taught me and my son how to cook eggs. Unfortunately, eventually my mother died. I cried all day until my son said, Mother, stop crying. If you carry on like that, I'm going to commit suicide. So, of course, I stopped crying. The next morning, my father rang up and said, I need your help. I said, what is it, Father? I smiled so he could hear me smiling. He said, I put the egg in the microwave and it burst. This is an ostrich egg, by the way. 
so that you can see it. I said, of course it bursts because it's got air in it. You have to put it in cold water. Boil it up very slowly and carefully, okay? Now, I'm going to be very careful all next year. I was very careful all last year because my son got married and I wanted to be at his wedding. Next year, he is going to have a baby, which will be my grandchild. Now, I want to be at the wedding. Now, I have got things to look forward to next year. That's, of course, the contest, because whether or not I win this contest, I'm going to come back to next year's contest and I want to see you. Can you please put your hand on your heart and promise me I'm going to live another year? Good, then you can come along and watch the contest with me. I kept my father alive at least another year and I followed my mother's advice, which is to take a calendar and write on it three things you're looking forward to. I'm looking forward to the birth of my grandchild and I want to be there at her wedding so that she doesn't have to worry that I'm going to die or be in a coma or anything else. I'm going to live another year with your hand on your heart and promise me I'm going to live another year. Back to you, Contest Chat. Thank you, Toastmaster Angela, for interesting story, personal story. Next speaker is Corey Melani. She will be deliver presentation mastery level one, researching and presenting. The evaluator is Abu Bakar Kimba. Toastmaster Abu Bakar, could you read the objective of the project, Cory? Over to you. The objective is for the member to learn or review basic research methods and present a well-organized, well-researched speech on any topic, five to seven minutes. Thank you, Toastmaster Abu Bakar. Toastmaster Corey is passionate product designer who loves to design usable and delightful product, whether it is an app or website that help people in their daily life. In her free, in her free time, she loves to find the best coffee in town, traveling and exploring new places and food, as well as taking photos. Her favorite quote is, never stop learning because life never stop teaching. Toastmaster Cory Melina will be delivered speech, learning how to learn. Toastmaster Cory, offer to you. Is my voice clear? Yes. Okay. Good evening, good morning, and good afternoon, fellow Toastmasters and dear guests. <sighs> there are so many things that I want to do, yet so little time. How many of you feeling the same as I am? This is the story of a modern life. Take a moment to consider how many things you want to learn how to do things. What's on your list? I'll ask two percent randomly. Person one, Abu Bakar, what's on your top list skill that you want to learn? I want to learn how to fly. Hmm? How, to, how fly? to fly? Oh, great. Then what's holding you back from getting started? I have to join flying school, which is very, very stressful, and I do not have the time for it right now. Mm, I see you do not have the time, and you already expect it to be very stressful. Okay, thanks for sharing. Mm, I will choose one more person. How about Peter Chong? Yeah, Hi, Peter. Hi. What's on your top list skill that you want to learn? 
to learn would be I would like to learn uh, to how to interact with persons uh, very comfortably because I do have some where I actually personally meet people when the when when the conversation has been I do not I can't actually open a normal conversation with others. So the, the environment will be feel very awkward and freeze. So I will feel very nervous and shy to interactions with person in life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing. May I know also what's holding you back from getting started? Or what's uh, the difficult thing to get started? Well, when I just met people, I would feel very nervous, then I would get mm -hmm. shredding, then mm -hmm. the, my brain will automatically drain. <laughs> I can't even <laughs> open a new conversation with them. I see, I see. Mm -hmm. So it's about the nervous, nervousness uh, to, get, to getting started. Thank mm -hmm. you, Abu Bakar and Peter Chong, uh, for sharing. Indeed, to learn a new thing takes time take patience and efforts to learn and master. Is it possible to learn a new skills, which is a less painfully, or acquire, or even a, require less time to, less time and effort to master it? I will share with you uh, three tips how you can learn and acquire new skill faster. Tips number one, focus your energy on one skill at a time. Just one. And place other skill on temporary hold. One of the easiest mistakes to make when learning or acquiring new skills, like Abu Bakar want to learn um, flights, how to fly, and Peter want to learn uh, how to socialize in a more comfortable um, manner. Just focus on one thing first. Um, don't mix up with uh, other skill that you want to learn. It's a matter of a simple math. Acquiring a new skills require a really critical mass of concentration, time, and focused attention. If you only have one hour each day to default to learn, and you spread that one hour of time and energy across 10 different skills, no individual skills is going to receive enough time and energy to generate a noticeable improvement. For me, as a product designer, there is so many things that I, I wanted to learn. I have to master the skill of interaction design, data analytics, and doing research. If one day I only have one hour free time and I divided that one hour into three different learnings, do you think it could work by switching to three different topics in one hour? Tips number two. Once you identify a skill to focus on, next step is to deconstruct it, break it down to a smallest possible parts. For example, maybe I will give example about uh, playing golf. Playing golf is a skill that has uh, many sub components. How to choose the correct clubs, how to learn etiquette about golf, how to grip a golf club, and make a perfect swing and etc. So once the skill is deconstructed sufficiently, it's a much easier to identify which sub skill appear to be the most important. By focusing only on the critical sub skills first, you will make a progress with less effort. Tips number three, eliminate barriers that make it difficult to acquire a new skills. Like for example, Abu Bakar mentioned has no finding no time. <laughs> it's a it's a I think number number one that people keep uh, delaying to learn a new skill. So if you could identify what's the distraction or what's the barrier that makes you difficult to find time, it will be good. Like for example, there is an environmental distraction or even emotional blockers. For me. Personally, my biggest distraction will be a social media or even not in the mood to learn it. So we tend to want to acquire new skills and keep doing many activities that we enjoy doing, like watching Netflix, playing video games, etc. It's big, it, it is best to make a dedicated time to practice 
if you want to improve quickly. You can split your practice into several smaller parts, like for example, 20 minutes of practice, 10 minute breaks, 20 minutes of practice, 10 minute breaks, etc. Ladies and gentlemen, next time, if you want to learn a new skill faster, remember these three points. Firstly, pick a new skill that you wish to acquire and put all your focus, energy, attention into acquiring that one skill. Secondly, learning the fundamental, working on the most important sub-skill first. Thirdly, eliminate distraction. Identify low value uses of your time, then choose to eliminate them. Back to you, Toastmaster of the day. Thank you, Toastmaster Corey. Please give the tremendous round of applause for Toastmaster Corey with. Yes. Uh, barrier. We have barrier every day to focus. When we work, when we read, sometimes smartphone, social media distract us. So, I agree with your suggestion is one of the thing is eliminate barrier. You can focus to your target. Thank you. The third speaker is Patricia T. The evaluator is Mike Monre. Patricia T will deliver speech uh, dynamic later level one, mastering fundamental, researching, and presenting. Mike Monroe, could you read the objective uh, Patricia project? I'm sorry, Mr. Toastmaster, I cannot. I don't have access to the information, but I can say that Patricia is going to give us a very good presentation between five and seven minutes, and she's going to work hard to uh, meet her goals and objectives. Mr. Toastmaster, I return it back to you. Great. Thank you, uh, Toastmaster Mike Monroe. Patricia has been in the early childhood field for over 20 years. As a mother of three doctors, she believed that the joy of the learning should never stop. Tonight, Patricia will speak children as active communicators. Children as active communicators. Over to you, Patricia. Thank you, Toastmaster of the day. Good day, fellow Toastmasters and guests. Children should be seen, but not heard. That is a thing of the past. Now we want children to be active communicators. Sally is a five-year-old. She goes to school cheerfully every day, and she participates eagerly in class conversations, hands-on activities, and daily routines. In class, Sally takes out the materials from the learning centers, and she works on them independently. Sometimes, she brainstorms ideas with her friends, and they problem-solve together. During meal times, Sally observes table etiquettes, and she takes turns to contribute to conversations. Sally is a happy girl, and all these are possible because Sally's teachers believe in creating an environment conducive for children's learning, an environment suited for active communicators. How important it is that preschool teachers stimulate children's learning of skills, knowledge, and dispositions through meaningful interactions. The Nurturing Early Learners Framework is a framework used by Singapore kindergartens and preschools. It clearly describes the holistic development of children through the six learning areas. I would like to show you. We have the aesthetics and creative expression, discovery of the world, language and literacy, motor skills development, 
numeracy, and there is social and emotional development. Let me start with aesthetics and creative expression. In aesthetics and creative expression, children create art pieces freely based on their imagination. They learn the elements of art and they learn to draw. When we were little, we had to color within the lines. The sky always had to be blue and apples always had to be red. Now things are different. Just the other day, I heard a preschool teacher telling a child, in art, there is no right and no wrong. How empowering is that statement? Now, my sky can be red. My apples can be purple. In discovery of the world, children learn about the world. They develop a love for nature and appreciate living creatures. Now Sally can go home and tell her mother stories of how that caterpillar turned into a butterfly. The next learning area is the language and literacy. In language and literacy, we witness children making sense of words and developing an awareness of print. It is beautiful to see a child totally immersed in the world of stories. Margaret Fuller said, today a reader, tomorrow a leader. Indeed, we are building leaders of tomorrow. In the gross motor development, children learn a series of fundamental movements as they involve themselves in obstacle course, indoor or outdoor, they grow muscles. When I was a child, I used to play catching around the blocks. At the playground, I pretend that there were sharks. Did you play hopscotch? Zero point? Five stones? How about this? One, two, three. Are you ready? Four, five. What comes after the number five? One and two make three, two and two make four. The mathematical concepts of more and less. All these are numeracy. Now with all this said, there is one more learning area yet to be mentioned the social and emotional. Children need to receive love and attention from adults so they can reciprocate by being kind to people around them. Remember Sally? She goes to school cheerfully every day. Now imagine Sally on her first day of school, at the school gate, teary eyed, looking like a fish out of water. Her teacher comes along, yanks her from her mother and says, shush, Sally, stop crying. It is time to go in for school. That teacher did not read the Nurturing Early Learners Framework. Children need time to make connections. They need time to build healthy relationships with peers and adults. When they engage in positive experiences in a nurturing environment, children can grow up safe and secure, not just physically, but also mentally. Preschool teachers all around the world are working hard, caring for the children, but not just that. Preschool teachers all around the world are working hard, creating meaningful interactions. They are working hard providing a conducive environment for active communicators. My dear fellow Toastmasters and guests, I urge you, the next time a child comes up to you, connect with the child with eye contact. Ask open-ended questions to draw out the responses from the child. 
that way, you can encourage active communication. There are many theories that support children's learning. Today, I will state three. John Piaget's Cognitive Development Theory views children as active and motivated communicators. Vygotsky believes that social interaction plays a fundamental role in children's learning. John Dewey advocates for authentic learning through first-hand experiences. Children should be seen but not heard. That is a thing of the past. Back to you, Toastmaster of the day. Please give one welcome to Toastmaster Patricia Wee. Thank you, Toastmaster Patricia. You are right. We need to support our children to develop their imagination and potential. In pandemic era, I think we have more time to communicate with our children in our house. Thank you. The last speaker is Toastmaster Kanan Sankara. Toastmaster Kanan will deliver speech uh, level three, increasing knowledge, inspire your audience. And the evaluator is Azmina Gulani. Toastmaster Azmina, could you read the objective of the project Toastmaster Kanan Sankara? Thank you, Toastmasters and fellow guests. Mr. Kanan is speaking on the path effective coaching, level one evaluation and feedback. And the topic is let's keep the cell phone down. Let's keep the cell phone down, Mr. Kanan. Thank you, Toastmaster Azmina. Toastmaster Kanan Shankara loved to travel. He lived in Baltimore, Maryland, United States with his wife, Janaki Kanan. They have one son who is studying in John Hopkins University. He started his Toastmaster journey in late 2011, eager to improve his speaking skill. He would like to give speeches without any preparation. His goal is to speak without any grammatical mistake. Toastmaster Kanan Sankara will speak put in down. Put in down. Offer to you, Toastmaster Kanan Sankara. You have time uh, five to seven minutes. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and especially my evaluator for introducing me. How many of you need the cell phone every minute of your time? How many of you, when you drive, check whether you have the phone with you? If you do not have the phone, take a U-turn and rush back to your house to pick the phone. Shame on you. Of course, including me. Most of us are addicted to the cell phone and the number of apps that we are using has considerably increased. I remember I bought a cell phone with this small. Now the apps are going up and up. When I get up, I check the phone for the new messages, send email responses to Toastmasters, check for texts, and put likes to the Facebook messages. My friend taught, my parents taught me, hey, to think about God when you get up, always pray God. They told me that the God would be in any form, but I have recently found that my God has become my cell phone. Many of the people put their phone under the pillow and cannot live without it. A recent survey has revealed that an average person checks the smartphone at least 80 times in a day. Nearly one third of the 
respondent felt they can be abstain from any other work for a week but cannot be without the phone even for a single day how do you know whether you are addicted to the cell phone you can know by three things do you put the phone under the pillow and the first thing you see is the phone you have to have the phone 24 by 7 and you always see a phone while taking to others even when you take the phone if you go to the restroom then you are definitely sure that you are severing from nomophobia this means you have a phobia that you are afraid that you may not be able to use the phone you may need to put the relationship first and avoid using the phone whether it is a quick text or a social media it can be difficult you can put it down you don't have to wait even i have seen people who are driving the moment they get the text they will be holding the steering and responding like this this is not good this may create an accident i want to share a story you know me i always share a story immediately but this is a real story i was working in humana in loyal kentucky one of my colleague's daughter who was 17 years old i think she was studying in 11th grade here they call it as a junior she was driving in a car at a 40 mile zone she did not travel she was not speeding up 40 miles should be around 70 kilometers if you are in the kilometers in around approximately she thought the speed is only slow and she started texting to her boyfriend she was on me suddenly she saw a car coming in the opposite direction and she did not have time to react and perished in that accident she was a beautiful girl had she concentrated on the road she would have finished the masters and might be married and settled fellow toast masters whether it is a quick text or responding to singapore online toast masters let us wait let us stay go to a safe place and then respond i am also a guilty of it but i am slowly coming out of it if you think that the email and facebook can bite you don't have to be driving and then you don't have to be typing it this is not good multiple studies have shown that the parents who increase that the screen time whether it is smartphone tv computers video game their children are getting affected our children are learning from us and following our footstep when we focus on a screen instead of our child we are sending a message that says hey my phone is more important than you parents in my office always ask why kids are so interested in smartphone it is because we are doing the same thing fellow toastmasters it is time please depend, do not depend on the smartphone please try to give time for our family let us wait it is not urgent that we need to respond the email while driving or while we are concentrating on the classes smartphone is not a substitute for relationship try to set up the phone in a not disturb board and spend that time with family and children i know in even when you are attending the singapore toastmasters i know many of us are just using the phone i think it can wait let us focus on the speakers let us give them the good evaluation as today thomas chen said we need to focus and analyze those speeches let us all do very good let us focus on relationship and let us put the cell phone down back to you mr toastmaster thank you toastmaster sankara please give warm welcome to toastmaster sankara wheel i hope you uh, focus on the speaker uh, put off your smartphone <laughs> yes smartphone addiction is big problem 
Why? Because you say that it is big distraction. We can concentrate if we always rely on smartphone. Thank you. Uh, Toastmaster Lee Buckley, are all speaker qualified or not? Mr. Toastmaster of the day, all except speaker three are qualified for the voting. I've put the individual timings in the chat. Okay, thank you. Please for the, who is the best prepared speaker? Thank you. Now we have to break 10 minutes before we continue our last segment, evaluation segment. Thank you. We uh, break uh, 10 minutes. Thank break you. for 10 minutes, okay, thanks. Welcome back, everyone, to the last segment of our meeting, the evaluation segment. We have three evaluators. The first evaluator is Azmina, Azmina Gulani. She lives in Mississauga, Ontario, working in textile and garment with her husband. Uh, Toastmaster Azmina will evaluate Kanan Sankara speech. You have time three minutes maximum. Offer to Thank you, you Azmina. Thank you. Thank you, fellow Toastmasters and guests. So, uh, Mr. Kanan, your uh, topic was really very, you have chosen very great topic. It's everyday topic. So we can improve and take some suggestions from you. Your voice was, first I will give you uh, the what, are, what is the best in your topic, then where you can improve upon, and then some, some of the suggestions. So the best was your clarity of the voice was excellent. Vocal variety was really good. Eye contact was as if I felt you were talking to me. The hand gestures were good, but it would be great if you would have standed and, and presented. Otherwise, your hand movements was very good. Your audience awareness was good. You are aware of the audience and their age group. And it was within your comfort level. And it seems that you are very intrigued and you love your topic and you felt very interesting. Now, I love the fact that you have started that how many people are addicted to the cell phones and then you have, you have proved your, you have backed your fact with the points that 80 times a day we use cell phone and we considered it as a God. And we, have, we are in the phobia if we don't have a cell phone and we use it 24 seven, even in the restroom, even on the bed. And then you came to, uh, then you have said the, the suggestions that instead of being on the cell phone, shift to relationship. And 60% of the life is relationship and 40% is the work. So you have back with the very strong point of relationship. And then third point, which was really great was you have given life story of the girl who has come across so much destruction, destruction due to cell phone and she has lost her life forever. And then fourth, you have talked about the screen time that the kids are, <laughs> the screen time the kids are having. Uh, now the improvement you can do is, instead of going to the relationship only, you could have given some other suggestion like uh, instead of being on the phone, go for meditation, go for walks, see movies, listen to music, meet friends, socializing. And again, uh, then, then you also, you can back the screen time reduction. You can back, you, you can let us know what are the effects on health the cell phone is giving us. For example, anxiety, each time we receive our messages, our cortisol level is increases. 
the eye the eye constraints with the cell phone the cortisol levels the stress is the anxiousness so there are certain health issues also connected with the with the cell phone as well then uh, the suggestion is if you can show us some pictures of the woman driving and then the accident happened or maybe some some other uh, other pictures interesting pictures and then you can uh, you you need to do some little take little pauses as well although it was very clear but li taking little pauses so we know that now you are going to the solutions and now you are going to the story and now you are going to the screen time things like that rest of your topic was really great i love the way you presented i love the way you put it emphasize on each and every topic and the gesture your topic was very lively and it made us spoke to listen to you and focus you uh, as always your topic was and your your delivering speech was really great thank you thank you toastmaster asmina we learn each other the second evaluator is abu bakar gimba toastmaster abu bakar gimba is the secretary of the lighthouse prestige toastmaster nigeria he is a project manager sorry uh, and, uh, toastmaster over there maybe you would like to give a uh, toastmaster jackie first because uh angela is going for the contest tomorrow so i think it should be quite late okay for me it's fine to do it the no, way no, backwards no, because angela is going to book for the contest early in nine in 10 hours time so you have to go ahead first okay uh thank you president yeah the next evaluator is toastmaster jackie she will evaluate uh, angela lunchberry speech offer to you Toastmaster Jackie. Thank you, Toastmaster. Dear Angela, what a refreshing speech. Live another year. What a title. Very strong. And you come up with this interesting start involving actively the audience with putting the hands on the, on the heart, which I put too high, but that's okay. And asking this and involving the audience. A very strong entrance. I also like to uh, comment on your background colors, the, the color green, blue, and red. The red the chair is red, but it, it's very strong and it's very, I think it's very funny and it's very appealing. I look on three to four things in a speech. One is for sure the body language, facial mimic. There you get a five star. The voice, is it clear, audible? Do you pause faster, slower, louder, softer? You get at least three to four stars there. I also looked on props. I love props myself. You had four different props during your speech. The photo of your uh, of your um, of the, the, the small child, then the egg, the button on here, and the calendar. It's very vivid. Even if somebody doesn't understand the speech, they understand the props. Then I also look: is there an intro, introduction, body, like conclusion? Perfect, all within the time frame. As we heard. The intro should be the longest, everything is fine. And your speech was funny. That connects with the audience. I have, I have had very difficult time to find something that I would think to suggest for the next level to speak from an international audience. I came up with, that, with, the, uh, with the example you had for living three or more, three, I mean, three examples for living another year. That is the holidays like Christmas and New Year. Not everybody celebrates that. So maybe it's possible to add a different, uh, different reason. I would think like to achieve a goal you set before, to make a new friend or to ask for a pay raise. And 
it's just a suggestion. Also, during your speech, your head was a bit cut off. It wasn't too bad, but to make a better impact, I would look into that. And to live another year and to see your next speech, I'm looking forward. Thank you, Toastmaster Angela. And I return to the Toastmaster. Thank you, Toastmaster Jackie, for the powerful evaluation. The next speak, the next evaluator is Abu Bakar Kimba. Toastmaster Abu Bakar Kimba is the secretary of the Lighthouse Prestige Toastmaster Nigeria. He is a project manager. When he's not eating, sleeping, and reading, he is at Toastmaster meeting. Toastmaster Abu Bakar will evaluate uh, Cory Melanie speech. Offer to you, Toastmaster Abu Bakar. Thank you. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Evening. Can you hear me? Am I audible? Yes, you are. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, good evening, fellow Toastmasters and guests. Toastmaster Corey, this was such a gift to me because I really, really loved your speech. Your speech was so good that I was wondering where the time went. When I saw the red card, I was angry at Toastmaster Lee at some point because I was thinking she passed out the time. Thank you for this speech. You opened wonderfully with role playing. Oh. I need to do so many things, but I don't have the time. I really loved that. Your audience awareness and engagement was top notch because you asked the audience what they wanted to learn and you were able to lay the foundation of your speech that most of the things that people struggle with have to do with learning. I really loved your gestures as well. I haven't seen gestures this good in a while. Most of everything you said, was buttressed by your gestures. When you're talking about flying, you're talking about time. You, when you were moved back a bit, I really love that. This just enforces your message. Your eye contact as well. You are looking at the camera lens as if it were a live audience. This just makes us feel at ease. We in the audience, we feel like you're connected to us. I also love your pauses. You pose beautifully at the right places at the right times. I love that. My recommendations for you, uh, I have quite a few. For example, you talked about when you're in your delivery, I expected some sort of smoothness because I noticed there was a lot of R counters, R R's in your speech. There was a lot of false fillers. And uh, there was a bit of uh, maybe tense grammar, misalignment. For example, if it's a plural, I hear you call it in singular or singular, I hear you call it in plural. You know, all this can be worked upon. You just need to speak more. And I feel like your vocal variety could improve as well because it seems to me as if there was a bit of a monotone during your speech. I expected to hear some rises and some falls here and there, but I didn't. It doesn't really take away from your speech, but it would reinforce your message. Then your facial expressions. Now, I don't know if this is how, how you do it or this is the way you interact, but I would really implore you to work on your facial expressions because to a very large extent, when people hear what you have to say and they understand your message, they want to see you active. When you show it in your face, it just tells them that you are genuine, you are passionate, you are confident, and it makes an audience want to hear what you have to say. So I need you to work on that. Then as far as your organization it goes, I love, there was a clear introduction, there was a body, and there was a conclusion. I loved that. In your conclusion, when you said, if next time you want to learn something, remember these three things, priority, breakdown of skills, and Break the, uh, reduce barriers, I feel it could be stronger. For instance, you could have said something like, we have limits. We believe we have limits. We believe that we cannot go to a certain extent than the way we are now. So I believe if you could, said, if you could have said something like, the more knowledge you have, the more limitless you become. This is why you need to learn. And then when you want to learn, this is how you are going to do it. You know, but other than that, I really, really love your speech. I look forward to your future speeches and I hope to see you next time. Thank you very much, a Toastmaster. Thank you, Toastmaster Abu Bakar, for your evaluation. We hope all 
speaker will be improve their speech. The last evaluator is Mike Monroe. Toastmaster Mike Monroe will evaluate Patricia T. speech. Offer to you, Toastmaster Mike Monroe. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Distinguished Toastmasters in this room, an honor to be with all of you and our guest and most important, Patricia. Good morning, good afternoon, good day. My goal as a critical thinker is to evaluate you and give you some feedback, positive, and something that may help you in the future. I'm gonna use the law of three because it's very simple to follow three, not 10, not 15. Patricia, I'm gonna tell you how I see you on the camera, how I hear you on the camera, how I reacted to you on the camera, and then I'm gonna give you some recommendations and suggestions so you can help go on to be a better speaker. Now, one, how I see you. You're a natural communicator. You enjoy communicating. You love to share. You have a beautiful room. I'm focused on you and not on your room, but you have the books in the background. Wonderful. You have a beautiful natural flow of your body movements. You're very graceful, like a swan. So you've mastered the camera. Very good. Your eye contact is natural. You feel comfortable in front of the camera. In front of the camera, you're natural. And that's very good. Two, how I hear you. I'm going deaf in this year, so I have to active listen, listen in this year. You've got a pleasant voice, a very warm voice, a, a voice like a blanket. I think I can speak for other people, but you have a very pleasant voice. You're a mother, so you've mastered the art of communication with your children. Easy to follow. And my reaction to your presentation, you were talking to me, I felt. Now I've given you the flowers, I must give you the thorn. Are you ready? Patricia, a lot of information, a lot of information. Information is good, but your audience is very critical. There is only so much they can absorb. The, the law of three, yesterday, today, tomorrow, morning, afternoon, evening, winning, losing, tie, the good, the bad, and the ugly. When you have a lot of information, you wanna keep it very simple. You showed us seven topics that, in your education system, but you showed us three. There are people in the audience will say, what happened to the other four? In closing, when you, when, you, when you ask for the time, people tell you the time. They do not want to know how to build the watch. Good presentation, but be careful. The audience is very critical. Keep it simple. One, two, and three. Patricia, congratulations. Mr. Toastmaster, please. Thank you, Toastmaster Mike Mundo for your evaluation. Toastmaster Lee Buckley, are uh, all evaluator qualified or not? Mr. Toastmaster of the day, all except evaluator four who spoke first. So I've put the individual timings in the chat for everyone. Back to you, Mr. Toastmaster of the day. Okay, thank you. Please vote who is the best evaluator. Thank you. The last we have a counter. Toastmaster Edward Young, are you ready to be deliver your note 
Ah, Kondo? Yes. Okay. Postmaster, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm ready to proceed. How about you? Postmaster, As a counter, it is my duty to listen keenly for all crutches, crutch phrases, songs, and words throughout your presentation, and to give you a count as to what to look for going forward in future presentation. Starting with our Toastmaster of the evening, Ahmad, I have you for five hours and one so. Our presenter, Toastmaster Thomas Chen, I have you for 38 so's, 46 right, 12 all right, 20 okay, four correct, and five yeah. Patricia, doing your table topic, master of the evening session, I have you for four, all right. Joan, I have you for one, ah, uh, and three, so. Cool, cool Raj, I have you for two, hours uh, and two, so. Gilgesh, I have you for 25, hours uh, and five, so's. Asmina, I have you for one hour. During the manual presentation, Toastmaster Angela, I have you for one so and one okay. Co Toastmaster Corey, I have you for two so. During the evaluation, I have Asmina for four so's and Abu Akbar one so. That is my accounting for the evening, Toastmaster of the evening. Thank you, Toastmaster Edward, for your note on our counter feeler. Thank you. The most critical and the most important case success factor that can make an entrepreneur to become successful entrepreneur is willingness to action. This is the first and the most important factor would be in current entrepreneurs. The second is entrepreneur knowledge. And the last one, not last one, the next is passion and persistent. And the ability for teamwork is also very important to be success in entrepreneur and to be entrepreneurship. Before we close the meeting, I invite uh, Toastmaster Lee Buckley to deliver closing speech and announcement who is the best Prepare speech. Who is evalu Who is the best evaluator? Offer to you, Toastmaster Lee Buckley. Mr. Toastmaster of the day, I yeah. as I'm doing the timer roll tonight. I believe club president has the results. Oh. thank you, Toastmaster of the day. Yeah. Before I announce the result, can I have the feedback for our guests? First person will be Toastmaster Panel, our returning, our ex-member of the club. Give your feedback. <laughs> your Thank, you, Willie. Thank you, Willie. We're witnessing historical moments, the return of the prodigal son in Singapore. What is it now? Singapore International Dynamic Speakers. The name keeps growing. The knowledge base of the club keeps growing. I'm, I'm delighted to discover new talent with this visit. The speakers tonight, you guys have, uh, you guys deliver value. And that's a major compliment. That's a major compliment because when you deliver the value, you, the, the listener doesn't have to go finding the value because the value is delivered. You see what I mean? I'm very happy to have been among you. 
I must confess, it was Thomas with his workshop that uh, brought me here. It's Good Friday in Greece. We're about to celebrate Easter, the Greek Easter this Sunday. And together with, yes, thank you, Jackie. Good to see you again, Jackie. Look at that, look at that wonderful discovery around the world. And together with that, I would say that it was solid PR work. I think it's from Lee, correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm uh, giving credit to the right person, I hope that um, I made sure that I have a, again, a bridge with this club and to feel welcome to come back at least for a visit. And uh, who knows? Yes, I see a heart. And the only way to respond to a heart is with a heart back. So hearts back to you, Willie. And thank you, uh, thank you. Thank you so feedback. much for the learning today. OK, can I have feedback for Toastmaster Jackie? Thank you very much for the word, Toastmaster of today. I'm here with this group here today because of Mike. Mike invited me. And because I'm actually off, I'm not working today because it's Friday afternoon. So I normally work, but I had the time and could be with you guys and girls, of course. It's a very long time, three hours for a meeting. It's for me very much to have to hold up the, the how you call it the con I don't momentum. remember the name. sorry a moment yes so and um but it was very interesting very lively very I have guests I guess I have new friends in Singapore and in other countries I mean I knew other I know Mike and Panos from former clubs, we have been members. And it's always good. Toastmasters, Mike, what you say always, um, Toastmaster is a friend or you haven't you met yet a before. A friend you have not met. A new friend. So it Toastmasters is to make new friends. And it's one of my objectives. This year of living, making new friends. And that's why I live another year to make new friends. And I hope to be part again next week because I won't be working next Friday if you meet every week. And it was very interesting. And I like Toastmaster meetings. Thank you. Back to the Toastmaster of the day. Thank you, Toastmaster Jackie, for your wonderful feedback. Our guest, Kura, see your feedback. Since you are returning to class, right? Yeah, first of all, thanks a lot for giving me this chance and giving me this feedback. As uh, in a simple words, I can say this is a dream life for me. This is a dream meeting for me because of I am feeling well and on that platform, we can like uh, uh, meet to the people all over the world, different accent, different way of the talking and the different things. So in a simple, in a short words, I will say only one thing. This is the best platform. And I'm willing to be here each and every time. That's a lot. Back to you, sir. Okay. Toastmaster Abu Bakar, your feedback. I know you have been a literary guest sometime. Thank you, Toastmaster okay. Willie. Uh, honestly, the, the, the thing about your meetings is they are very, they're very enlightening. And just like Panu said, the value, you know, it's almost as if you guys have done the work for us, the audience. And you are giving it us, giving it to us just easily like that. You know, there's so much knowledge at your meetings, and you guys are so organized. I really love whenever I visit, visit your club. I really love um, what you guys do. I love you guys, and as so much so that I have a member with me who will deliver a speech next week at your club. So I'm trying to invite my own members to come and see the, you know, the kind of awesomeness you guys are dishing out. You know, so subsequently we would um, try also to, to get more members to come to come join your club. I learn as much as we can from you guys. Thank you. Okay, I guess there's a there's a lady called Harila Amasi. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, can I, can you can you start your video and give us your feedback since you have? Uh, there is a problem with the internet, so I couldn't okay, turn okay. on my Never video. Mind. I can give us your feedback. Yes. Yeah. So it's my first day in this forum and I'm very much delighted that I got an opportunity to attend this forum virtually. I'm very happy that I got a chance to uh, 
uh, here to the topics given by people from various parts of the world. The forum is really very interesting and the people are very nice and I'm gaining a lot even from the first day. I hope to continue further in the forthcoming sessions and I would like to participate actively in the forthcoming forums. Thank you so much. Thank you for organizing this and you really, uh, really okay, you guys you. are great. Yeah. Thank you. I guess there's two announcements. Toastmaster Corey have completed presentation mastery level one. When Thanks, she really. completed her, her research and presenting. The second announcement is Toastmaster Michael and our, and I guess I can say that Toastmaster Peter Chong, he will be joining Singapore International Dynamic Club next week. So we are going to be 23. In, Welcome, in Peter. Peter is from Malaysia. Toastmaster Michael is from Spain. So who knows, Toastmaster Jackie can join us in the near future as a member. <laughs> okay. Can I have your draw roll first? Virtual draw. Okay. The best table topic speaker go to Toastmaster Edward Yang. And the best prepared speaker, we have a tie. It's Toastmaster Corey and Toastmaster Kana Sakara. And the best evaluator is no other than Toastmaster Mike. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so can we go? Do you know that entrepreneur can also be learned in a Toastmaster Club? Many people will ask me, how? Is it by table top, taking part in table topic, prepare speaker, evaluation? The answer is, you can be an entrepreneur by volunteer as a truck officer. That's where you learn the basic. And you, you made a mistake, you love for it. That's why when you go out to open world, you learn the hard skill. So entrepreneur doesn't mean that you cannot learn in Toastmaster because I have saw many Toastmaster have started their own business, podcast business as a startup and eventually they are still in the process. I will not say that it's a failure or they are still progress, but many of us, many of them start as a club officer. So I know in three months time, two months time, I, many of us will have to stand down and new club officer will be elected and they will start their entrepreneurial journey. The only thing about entrepreneurial in those master club is you are not paid, it's a volunteer role. So, and one more last announcement that I forgot just now. Next week, we have Toastmaster Lee Bartley to deliver another mini workshop again. But it will be all, I can't recall what, what's the topic. Let me, let me... Your body speaks. Yeah, your body speaks. Yes, we're talking about body language. We are running all this series of workshop because we have a, we, we have a few new... I mean, we have new members that join the club, we need them to train. As well as members who have not trained, we need them to train because many of them are first time Toastmasters. So we lost the touch last year. So we started the series of mini workshops to start their journey in Toastmasters. And I would like to see you same time same day, same Zoom ID. Have a nice weekend. And I declare the meeting close.